Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is another top 10 testing. If you have no idea what this means and you're new to my channel, that is just what I call my monthly favorites. It is a collection of my top 10 favorite products of the month that are newer to me or just as simple as new on the market. This could include things that are probably mostly lip products since that is what my favorite makeup item is. But I do also include things like foundation. Um, recently I'm going to be including more holiday sets and things. Simple as that. If you want to see my current top 10 testing or top favorite products for the month of September now, just stay tuned and keep on watching. I'll link my past top 10 testing below and since these are top 10 testing I would like to let you guys know that none of my opinions have really changed since my last video and I do still enjoy all the products mentioned in my August monthly top 10 testing. Let's start with a holiday palette. This will come as probably no surprise if you watched my review video on it. My impressions haven't changed really. I do find that the mattes are a little bit less dry than I may have said and Another thing I forgot to mention in that video is there really isn't much fallout with these, which is nice. A lot of palettes have a ton of fallout. These actually have very little fallout. The formula reminds me the most of the Lorac Pro formula, so the mattes aren't the creamy and smoothest, and the shimmers are definitely slightly more intense, but what I really like is the ability to pack these shadows on without fallout. I also really love the packaging. like. Too Faced always has the cutest packaging. I mean, I don't know. I'm obsessed with makeup. I'm obsessed with France, Paris, Paris, <laughs> the works. So these were the three little palettes that came in it. My favorite is the one that I did use in the demo, which is Paris Au Naturel. It has the most neutral shades. I really like the most, which is the boring shade in here the matte cream color which is a little bit on the yellower side. I find that if I take a slightly dense brush I can just really pack this on the lid, cancels out any veining or anything on my eyes and just preps the eyes, sets the eyes, makes the brow bone nice and highlighted so I really like this guy. The other shadows in here are also really nice. Um, the blushes are actually really great. They are definitely a more buildable formula and the bronzer also is actually pretty nice. I thought I wouldn't like it very much since it does have shimmer, but the shimmer is subtle on the face. It doesn't really show up, so good to know. If you want to see more in-depth stuff, I'll link my video down below that I already did on this. Next, we'll start on the face. This one I don't really want to show you guys since it's a tiny little depotted version of MAC Face and Body in white. My friend Megan sent this to me. It's just literally a little tub of it so I can get a little try of it before I bought it because it is pretty expensive and I'm definitely going to need to buy the full size of this or another white foundation. I am pretty pale. I mean, I'm darker than the white wall behind me, but I think this is considered tan for me, so... You know, I mixed white within the foundation and everything I'm wearing today. Tutorial will be up if it's not already, so stay tuned for that. And I mean, it matches pretty well with white mixed in, so skin tone. And it hasn't been breaking me out, I don't think. And it doesn't take away coverage. It doesn't give coverage either. It just definitely helps to lighten the tone of foundations. Not only does it lighten foundations, but it can lighten concealers. My first impressions on the Maybelline Master Conceal were not good. I thought it was too orange and I didn't really like it. That being said, it is nice if you have darker under eye circles and want to cancel them out since it is more orange or peachy or just not as pale as my skin tone. It was nice for before foundation to cancel them out, but as for concealing so that if I didn't want to wear a foundation and I just want a concealer, this didn't work. Mixed with the white, I really do like it. The coverage is not super extreme, but it is blendable, it is lightweight. I think the formula is kind of comparable to the ones that are the Twist Up Maybelline Instant Age Rewind formulas, but this one doesn't irritate my skin at all. It just kind of covers everything, blends nicely. I do really like this, so current favorite drugstore concealer would have to be this. 
last month I mentioned the NYX Control Freak Eyebrow Gel, which is a clear brow gel, and I said that it didn't make my brows crispy, and I like that. This month I have another brow gel to mention. It is the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel. I bought it when it was only $11 during one of the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sales. For $22, I wouldn't repurchase this, but if it was $11, I would. At this price, I still think the NYX one is a good option. It would still be almost two NYXs for the price of one at the sale price, so it isn't necessarily even affordable then, but what I like is it even holds my brows down better than the NYX one. It still doesn't make them crunchy either, so this is really good for extreme hold and still no crunchiness. Really, really like it. I do have it in my brows today, and as you can see, there are absolutely no brow hairs out of shape. Really like this. Worth the price, full price, no. Worth the sale price, yeah. Another product I haven't hauled yet is the Urban Decay Eyeshadow in Fireball. This is another <sighs> duochrome. I can't with duochrome, you guys. Duochromes are just like life, life. You see that? It reflects between a peach and a pink. Makeup Beacon just launched a duochrome collection. I do have a shade called Mai Tai, I think, that seems similar. I haven't purchased it yet since I think I don't really need to have almost the exact same shadow, but if you want me to buy it and tell you guys if it's the same or not, I could, but probably someone has the same idea and will do that for you guys. So Google it, maybe, probably not yet. These were also on sale for 50% off when I bought them. I bought another shade, but it wasn't quite up to favorite standards. And the price I paid was only $9.50 instead of $21. Get the Makeup Geek, but for $9.50, only a little bit more Makeup Geek, don't have to pay shipping and all that, this was worth it. So I think that the formula is really great. It's very buttery, very smooth. It's not super, super intense. Really great quality, smooth, bondable. What I especially like about duochromes is they're kind of slap on the lid, you're done. You can put it on your lid, then it already gives that depth in your outer corners. So you don't have to add anything. Add a transition color maybe, spice it up a little bit, but definitely duochromes are a very easy option to do an eye look with. Yeek. I want to mention a couple of their shadows. Far my favorite is Bitten. Definitely worth all the hype. I bought it and I was kind of like, oh no, 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 that is not gonna work. But it actually blends out really nicely. It gives definition and it doesn't make my eyes look irritated. With these kind of shadows, it can be a little bit difficult. This is definitely one that is flattering. On the lower lash line, on the lid, blend it with something else, you never know. I did mention this in my fall favorite makeup products. I don't know if that's going on before this or not. And then I also mentioned the shade Cocoa Bear in that video. Just a standard warm brown. Before this, I didn't really own too many warm browns, so I picked this up and it's definitely become a shadow I use a lot. I really like it. It's definitely a true warm brown. So it's not a cool brown, it's not a transition color, it's just a warm brown. It's also not too red either, but it blends especially, my favorite use is on the lower lash line just to smoke things out, it's so stunning. Uh, darken up the outer corner. It is completely matte, so it's bitten, so you don't have to worry about any shimmer or anything. They're buttery smooth mattes. They're buttery smooth matte is the shade Chickadee. This is just a sort of yellowy orange. I like this for adding warmth to a look or just blending things together. It's not the most standard color, but it is definitely a nice one. I thought it would be similar to Milani Bella Manor, but def definitely this is more yellow toned. That is definitely more orange and less true matte. So this definitely is a unique shade in my collection. The last shade I want to mention is Cosmopolitan. Shimmery, rose, gold, not duochrome. Mm, slightly on the more rose end and it is intense. It is definitely pinky rose gold, not gold rose gold, but I still really like it, it's stunning. 
I haven't used it as much as I'd like to say, but I love it every time. And I was mentioning Makeup Geek shadows, I definitely want to include that in this video. For transitioning to lip products, I want to mention a brush favorite. I like this especially for doing my highlighter. As you can see, my highlighter is pretty intense. This is the e.l.f. Baked Blush in Pinktastic. And what I like is I like the Real Techniques Buffing Brush. I think maybe in one of my earlier videos I used it as a foundation brush. It works excellent for that as well. But I wanted an alternative to the Anastasia brush and I wanted something already in my collection. So I said why not use the one you already have in that Real Techniques one. Looks like it could really pack on the highlighter. So if you want to glow to the gods, this brush is really nice for packing on a highlighter. It's not as precise. So it is a little bit bigger, but you could always pinch the brush head to make it smaller and target it along your cheekbones. I tend to just like to glow all over, so I'm okay with it not being as precise, but I just love this brush. Great foundation, buffing things if you put too much contour on, you want to blend it out, and of course, highlighter. For what I thought, I'd mention an EOS lip balm in a favorites video. I used to kind of really not like these, but I don't know if it's the formula that has the stripes on the packaging or if it's just they've improved or my personal preference because I thought they were too waxy, but this formula is definitely a lot nicer. I do think it keeps my lips nice and prepped. It's not as hydrating as an intense lip balm, so if you need extreme overnight hydration, this won't completely have you covered, but if you want something to use every night just keep up with it then it will keep your lips nice and smooth also great on your liquid lipsticks or any lip products that you think might become drying throughout the day next i want to mention the maybelline color blur in my magenta they twist up at the bottom there we go and they have a very silicone -y feel. They're more silicone than the mattes, meaning they glide a little bit better and they're a little bit less creamy, but they still do last a long, decent time on the lips and they don't bleed or fade or anything like that. They wear evenly, great lip product, especially if you want to try something sort of new, you try it out. I don't really use the side that has a little blending tip to do reverse ombre, but if you like that trend or you want to give it a shot, this formula is definitely great for that. I think most lip products you could do that with, but the formula on this does allow it to glide and blend smoothly. Or if you want to do a regular ombre and do some glider in the middle, this would definitely work for that as well. So I want to mention ColourPop lip liners. I've accumulated quite a few and I'm always probably going to buy more. I really like this formula. It's probably my favorite formula out of all the lip liners I've used and I try quite a few. It reminds me the most of probably the MAC Pro Longwear lip liners since they have I think even a most more creamy feel than those. They wear just as long as those, especially if you top them. Today I am wearing the shade Brills, topped with the Brills Lippy Sticks, and that's in the video I filmed earlier, so if you want to see how these apply, they apply just as creamy as a lipstick, so they are similar to like the Rimmel ones like that, but the wear time on these is actually amazing. I've used everything from a nude to a super vampy color, and the wear time is the same on the nude as it is on the vampy shade, which you can't find with most lip products. The nudes usually wear off super easily, and then the dark shades literally stain or bleed, but definitely a great color selection. I found out they had a true orange lip liner. That was one of my initial attractions to the brand, since even NYX had a orange, but I think it had shimmer. This is a standard matte true orange. They have a shade like the one I'm wearing today, which is a lavender. They have a gorgeous nude from their fall collection in the shade O Snap. They have grayish like Tootsie. I mean, I could go on. I can make a whole video about lip liners by ColourPop. Like, I hope you guys enjoyed this month's top 10 testing, which is my version of monthly favorites. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, bye!